welcome on behalf of Richard, Jackie, Sally, Stephen and John and the rest of Jill's family. Let me thank you for joining us here today for this service to remember and to give thanks for the life of Jill, Elizabeth, Noel. I know many of you have travelled some distance to be here and the family just wanted me to say it from the outset that they're sorry if they don't get a chance to chat to everybody today and I'm sure, I'm sure you'll understand why with the proceedings and the numbers. It means a great deal to them that you're able to join them today. Now if you'd like to make a donation in Jill's memory you can do so but we encourage you to do that online and you can do that through the guidance on the back of your service booklets. Donations are being collected for St. James's Church and above and beyond Bristol hospitals. I'm just going to pause for a moment to gather ourselves in a moment of silence before we begin. We have come here today to remember before God our sister Jo, to give thanks for her life and to commend her to God, our merciful Redeemer, and our Judge. So let's pray. Almighty God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice. And Lord, you love everything that you have made. So today, dear Lord, we ask that in your mercy you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life, and the sorrow of parting into the peace of heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, our first hymn is one that Jill loved very much. Words remind us of how God sustains and upholds us. And they encourage us in times of distress to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, who is our strength shield and our redeemer. Please don't sing along because of Covid regulations. Please do remain seated and enjoy the words and the music of our first hymn, which is Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer.
this first reading is from the Old Testament book of Psalms. Psalm 46 is read for us today by Jackie. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose stream make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. That was lovely. Thank you so much, Jackie. And our second reading has been especially chosen by the family. I understand it was first read at the Queen Mum's funeral. Sally, if you could read for us, if you can share tears. She's gone by David Hopkins. You can shed tears that she is gone. You can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember mum and only that she is gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back. Or you can do what mum would want, smile, open your eyes, love and go on. Hearing that uh, poem reminded me that Richard emailed me, emailed me, I think he's emailed a lot of us, um, <laughs> he emailed me earlier in the day about final arrangements because of the somewhat inclement weather. And I wrote back saying, sorry about the rain, do you want me to have a word? But as I, as I did, I just had this sense that the rain was God's tears. Is really appropriate, I think, for that poem. Just remind you of that verse that we heard earlier from Psalm 46. Whatever we're feeling today, be still and know that I am God. The Almighty is indeed with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress, our shield, our strength, and our redeemer. Richard, please come and share your tribute. Yeah. I've just, this is not in the script. I'd just like to thank my two daughters for kicking off the service so beautifully. And Jackie and Lee, in her usual, very business like way, and I'm very proud of The bank should be proud of you too. And the way you wrote that, but also Sally in the most moving way, that she changed the poem about an unknown person to a poem about her mum. So, the good news for you is this is not 2,100 words and it's not 16 minutes long. <coughs> Mainly because a vicar not far away from me decided it was too long at that point. I thought it was too long as well. <laughs> looking out over this sea of faces uh, 
makes me wonder if we're not at the Dick Turpin Memorial. And I'm so sorry that you have to hide your faces from me. And I think I recognise just about everyone. Thank you so much for being here. So I hope I can tell you stuff about Jill today that perhaps you did not know before. I hope you'll see Jill in the words I use and in the stories I tell. Jill lived life to the full and had run her course far too fast. She grew up in a hard-working and loving family unit, born in Philby, Norfolk, the daughter and the second child of William and of Blanche Dick Gaze. Now she was called Dick because her mother wanted boys, but had two girls. And so Dick it was. Blanche has been called Dick all her life. That is normal for Norfolk. Jill had one brother, John, who is here today with his four lovely daughters. Someone who I'm really sorry can't be here with us today is Jill's favourite cousin, Julian. And if you watch this, Julian, we miss you. For she, and almost she alone, is the one who should be standing here to tell you all about Jill's childhood. John, her brother by the way, hasn't a clue, but then that's brothers for you. I called her a couple of days ago, Julian and I did, and the words just poured out. Why haven't I heard this stuff before, I thought. To Julian, Jill was not just her cousin, she was her younger sister, her best friend, the person she was closest to as a child. And as I heard her telling me all that Jill meant to her, my mind went back 55 years, and I realised why I fell so totally in love with her way back then. Jill was carefree while I was a warrior, Julian said. She used to tell me to loosen up. She always had something to say. She wouldn't shut up in choir practice. She ruined a rendition of Silent Night at the village carol service one year when the first verse was a duet from the two of them. The organ intro started and was followed by more organ. But no words in dulcet tone. Just one girl and then two cackling with laughter. Jill's mother ranted that her daughter had been the biggest embarrassment possible in their small village. Somewhere around the age of seven, may have been younger, she distressed her parents again. She cycled down to see her cousin, whose house was alongside a busy main road, without telling them. They got a phone call when she turned up at the other house. Jill used to boast to us that she was tied to a chair for the afternoon and her bike was confiscated and hung up in the bike shed for a week. Jillian had stolen Jill's name the privilege of being born first. When Julian's mum told Jill's mum what name she had given her daughter, Dick replied, that was what I was going to call my next one if it's a girl. So I married a Jill with a J, not Jill with a G. Jill was first educated at Philby School, a school where her grandfather had been headmaster, and where the then current headmistress, Miss Baker, had called her the wild child. Jill's precocity became channeled into athletics as she moved into her teens and into Great Yarmouth Technical High School. She was only 13 when she won the Yarmouth School's Cup for Best Performance in the Long Jump. She went on to represent her county, Norfolk, in the Long Jump at the English School's Championships at Chelmsford in 1963 against Lillian Board, an international and Olympic athlete so cruelly taken from us by a cancer at a far earlier age than Jill has been taken from us now. She tr truly mixed with the great and the good. She became Norfolk County Champion at, eight hundred, sorry, at, 800, at 80 yards hurdles for women. 800 yards hurdles would be... Yes, too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And considering that she had to carry steps to get over the hurdles, that was no mean feat. We fell in love, I suppose, at a boys' Christian house party, youth house party in St Ives, Cornwall. Right, won by Jill's RE teacher, Kingsley Lloyd, who was also my crusader leader. Crusaders are an interdenominational Christian Sunday school. And Kingsley asked me, actually he asked my mother, if I would help run an event 
by being a dormitory leader. Two of her friends, Tony and Sue, also came along to help, and I literally met Jill in a railway tunnel. In the train, not on the track. I think it was probably I was probably everything that would not be interesting to Jill. Tony and Sue were actually already boyfriend and girlfriend, and walking out in the evenings was totally forbidden unless, unless there were chaperones for them. Unheard of today, you might say. And Jill and I were asked if we would oblige as chaperones. We did, and the arrangement ended up suiting both couples. Not before, however, Jill, who was there on kitchen duties, had made me a copy out of gravy sauce and poured gooseberry juice, the result of stewing gooseberries for a crumble, all over me. My girls tell me that that was flirting. I hadn't a clue that that was a <laughs> Jill was 17. I was 19, and the photo you see before you on the service sheet on the back cover was taken two weeks before we met, at the end of her year before her A-levels. She went to Dartford PE College to train as a PE teacher, and I was making my way in the illustrious world of cat and dog food sales. But when she realised that I would be posted away from Norfolk, maybe forever, it was a good enough reason for her to say, I want to be with you, always. So we married in haste, never repented, and had a honeymoon in Stevenage. No, I, bet, I, bet, I, bet you, I bet you never saw those words coming in a sentence, did you? While house hunting in the area, because there was, that was where I was being offered a permanent post, things moved quite quickly in the words of Petrus, and I soon moved again, this time to Yorkshire. Better post, better money, so we could buy a house was cheap housing existed up north. But hang on. Jill was pregnant, so while the house was being built, I was working out of a hotel in Yorkshire, and she went back to the house she was born in, the filling station in Philby, and the house her dad was born in, and she had Sally, our oldest. Back to Julian's memories. She had been so proud to be asked to be Jill's bridesmaid, and even prouder when she got home from work to be told that by her mum that Jill had had the baby. She rushed out of the door onto her bike and to see her best friend and beloved cousin who was sitting on the bed cradling Sally. Julian recounted the look of utter joy in Jill's eyes and the wonderment she felt when invited to hold our girl. This was the end of childhood the beginning of the new Norway family. Jill must have realised at this time, if the manager was going to work, then one of us had to man up, grow up, and wise up. And fortunately she did. <laughs> Richard, shut up! <laughs> Just shut up. The rest they say is history. Our story. The birth of two more children, Jackie and Stephen. The moving, moving house seven times as my jobs went through rise and fall. Murfield, Kirkeaton, Ruskington, Haddenham, Axbridge, Cheddar and Winston. As Chris Avery would be saying from the back, that's some train ride. Jill loved moving. She loved every minute of bringing up our children. She loved every minute of homemaking and made every single one the way she wanted it. But I think she delighted in Grandiston Cottage the most. I guess it was her dream house. We built the conservatory when we retired, and we're now calling it Jill's Mum's Grandma's Room. All our memories will end up there in one form or another. Jill had an extremely good dress sense, Handy for me, the worst dressed man in town. She somehow surrounded herself and wore stuff that was ageless. Again, just like me. To help out with family finances, Jill had a brief dalliance with the perfume industry and a market garden. Not really going hand in hand. Later, when the kids grew up a bit more, Jill worked full time in the stores for Builders of Bangor, where she became a hero among men but actually understanding tractor parts and being able to find them fast and accurately. And then she did the same at Tinkham's in Congresbury. 
We retired early, not because we had to, but because we wanted to. And boy, does that look like the right decision now. We spent six months visiting all our friends in the Southern Hemisphere, drove all over New Zealand and Australia. When we returned, we settled in this very church, in which Jill served faithfully on the social committee, as well as managing intercession motors. In the community, she was treasurer of the Winston Contact Scheme and was an important member of Week 2 cooking team at luncheon time. Jill's final year was spent mainly in lockdown, like so many. Not so good when you locked down with me, though. She focused on a ridiculously hard 2,000-piece jigsaw, and we completely relived our big trip down under in real time, while editing over 6,000 photographs down to 1,250 and creating two giant photo books. That we spent the last year of her life in a nice little bubble can now be looked upon as a joy, not a hardship. The hardship for us, for us all, is carrying on without her. But this we can do by the grace of our loving God who created us and takes us home when we're done. Rest in peace, my, our, lovely girl. Thank you so much, Richard. And our second hymn speaks of how Jill saw the love of God personally in the form of Jesus Christ. It encourages us also to look forward to the heavenly place that's prepared for each of us, even as we are being prepared for it. I'd just like to read you a verse from the hymn. Finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation, perfectly restored in thee. Changed from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love and praise. It is, of course, love divine, all loves excelling. Once again, please remain seated and don't sing due to COVID regulations, but please do enjoy the words and music of this beautiful day.
by Joe's son Stephen. Stephen, if you'd like to come forward. They saved the best and last. No, they didn't. <laughs> oh. Tribute to our mum, aka Smurf Tales, sponsored by Thatchers. Firstly, uh, I apologise for the slightly effective accent, but that's what comes from spending over 10 years with uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy and marrying an Italian American from Philadelphia. I also apologise if I don't make eye contact and this all seems rather scripted, it is. Uh, and also, my father ran over my glasses while I was at Heathrow, so seeing anything is pretty difficult right now. But anyway, it's the only way to get through this without choking, and I know Mum would want me to power through this and give it my best, uh, so strap yourselves in. Sprinkles. As you can imagine, I've had way too much time to think about what I would say today and to try and ensure I do Mum justice. I've also spent way too much quality time in isolation with a certain person standing right next to me here today, so writing this actually became a much-needed distraction. Sprinkles is one of my favourite words. More importantly, they are the staple diet of my children. Sprinkles in the UK are known as hundreds and thousands, but sprinkles sounds better, and in our house they go with absolutely everything. The point, well the point is that I wanted to weave in some sprinkles to what is obviously a sad day, and our mum was just like sprinkles, she made everything better. Composer Stephen. Smile. We have received a plethora of cards at Granston Cottage, for which we are all extremely grateful. I have a suspicion that the postman slash lady will appreciate the lightening of their load in the coming weeks. The outpouring of love, care and sympathy is a fantastic, fantastic tribute to Mum and that are a great indication of how much she meant to everyone. There was one theme that stood out to, to us children uh, that made us laugh, more sprinkles. That theme was her ever-present smile. While we would agree that Mum always had a smile when she was in the company of others, she was also more than capable of cutting you in half in the blink of an eye. Our Mum was a disciplinarian, certainly in our younger years, and there was no mistaking when you had not met the standards. Our recollection of those times was not the smiling little pixie that the rest of you got to see. Nonetheless, it kept us all in line. Some of us needed that more than others, that would be me. Jackie and Sally would often say that I got away with murder, but I think Mum knew that boys needed slightly different parenting than girls, and that was another reason why she was a great mum. The threat to burn my fingers off if I ever played with matches again, having set light to the back garden path in Axbridge, shaped my decision-making process, that's an American process, for the rest of my childhood and as a young adult. I certainly didn't see a lovely smile that day. Nor did I see that smile when she discovered my friend Dean Offer's size 10 footprint in the middle of her bed on her return from a holiday in Yugoslavia, or the time when I launched the relay baton at the athletics umpire and got my 4x400 metre relay team disqualified. But you are all right. She definitely had a great smile. My mum's bigger than your mum. Words we could never say due to the diminutive stature of, my, of our mum. As you all know, Mum was a little person with a huge heart, the biggest of them all. She cared more about other people than she cared about herself, maybe to her detriment in some ways. She was the perfect foil to the blunt object she selected as a life partner, yes, you, that's you there, and always tried to see other person, the other person's perspective, even if she disagreed. She did have her breaking point, however, and when it was time to hear from her, you most certainly knew things were about to get interesting. Family. I am pretty sure everyone in this room knows that the most important thing to mum was her family, and she was at her very happiest when she was surrounded by us, even Sally and Jackie. The smile you all refer to in your cards shone brightest when she was with her grandchildren and great-grandchildren, who she doted on like no other, and she will forever be in their memories as the world's greatest grandma. Heavy hearts, full of sprinkles, I could literally go on for hours, not as many hours as him, but I could go on for hours. But now it is time to wrap this up. As heavy as our hearts may be, 
they will always be full of sprinkles. The memory of an amazing wife, sister, mother-in-law, auntie, grandma, great-grandma, and friend. Simply the best mum we could have asked for. To use an American word, Stephen, that was awesome. Thank you so much. You're right, it was. <laughs> well, we've heard some memories from Richard and the family of who Jill was to them. We've now got space in our final hymn to reflect and hold who Jill was to each of us. So let's do that through the words and the music of our final hymn, Thine Be the Glory. including the 
occasionally squeeze in into a tiny little helicopter-shaped tent with her grandkids. And of course, tidying up after everyone, whether that was at home or in church, everything had its place. She loved birds, in particular owls and woodpeckers, but it could also be said, I think, that she was the wise owl of the family. Its moral compass. She was calm, she was fair, and she had a calming effect on others, especially dear Richard. <laughs> she had a love of community which she showed by being part of this church for many years. And as we were preparing for this funeral, we, we kind of lost count of the number of ways she helped out. The social committee, the prayer rota, pathfinders for teenagers, Friday club for the younger kids, guides, catering for cafe church, luncheon club, helping with messy church, helping tell the kids at Winscombe Primary the good news of God's love through school assemblies, to name but a few. She was a lover of order and cleanliness, wasn't she? And Richard joked with me in the week that heaven is now undergoing the best deep clean <laughs> it's had in years, courtesy of Jill. She also liked her moments of peace and quiet to reflect. And that kind of speaks about the woman she was. She might not have preached out loud about her faith, but it seems to me her actions spoke it most clearly. Jill knew what it was to love one's neighbour. Even though her last few months weren't easy, she had a life well lived, and there is so much to be thankful for and to celebrate in that. And in the tireless love, the self-sacrificial love she had for her family, her friends and community, and in the care and attention to detail and the time that she gave to everyone else, we see reflected our loving Creator God, who gave to each of us Jill, and gave to each of us the capacity for love <coughs> when he made us in his image. As we heard in Psalm 46, it's that same loving God, caring God, has time for us, who reaches out with a big heart, just like Jill who reaches out to us in our sorrow, in our grief, and in our loss, and stands by us as we mourn. For we know that the promise of God is that those who choose to receive his love in this life will be welcomed by him in the next. So let us pray. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your light and your truth. We give you thanks for Jill, for all that was good in her life, and for the memories we treasure today. Thank you for her love of nature, her love of family and her friends, her commitment to community. A deeply held faith in you, our great Redeemer. We pray that this time of sorrow and parting, we stand by family and friends who grieve today. Comfort them, O Heavenly Father. Be with them and extend to them your hope and your peace. And Lord, you promised eternal life to all who believe. 
Remember for good this your servant Jill, as we also remember her. And bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you're able to, please stand with me. <coughs> come to the prayer of commendation which is on your sheets and normally this is said only by the minister but I, as I was looking at this earlier it just seems to me it reflects the thoughts of our hearts so well that I'd like us to say it together. This is the prayer of commendation. We pray together. Almighty God, as you bring us face to face with our mortality, we thank you for making each one of us in your image and giving us gifts in body, mind, and spirit. We thank you now as we honour Jill's memory, whom you gave to us and have taken away. We entrust her to your mercy, and pray that you will show us the path of life and the fullness of joy in your presence through all eternity. Amen. And the words of the Lord's Prayer, which we continue to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Just remain standing for a moment for the blessing. Before I pray God's blessing on each of you, just to say that you can take your service booklets with you if you want, uh, as a reminder of the day, or you can leave them on your pews and we'll gather them up later. As there's such a large number of us here, when we come to exit, the wardens will invite you to exit on a row-by-row -row basis. So please wait your turn, uh, otherwise it'll be a bit of a melee towards the door. We want to keep the social distancing, don't we, and from the safety. So please bow your heads for the blessing. May God give to you his comfort and his peace. May he give to you his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those this day he calls you to love and care for. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.